Hi everyone, uh, this is Krishna here and uh, she's my lovely associate. Myself Dr. Swati. Uh, so in this video we are going to show the basic rubber dam application on a single tooth. I think uh, this was recorded probably uh, one year back. Two and a half years back. So recorded for my lectures and for the workshops. So this I am going to share with you all. Uh, in this uh, we have shown uh, two methods of the rubber dam application. The first one is uh, you can apply it with both wind and the windless clamps. Whereas the second one is for the wind clamps. So uh, Swati has helped me a lot. I yeah, hope you will enjoy this video and uh, have a look at it. Bye. Bye. -bye. Rubber dam sheet is available in different sizes like 4x4, 5x5 and 6x6 inches. 4x4 is for the pedo patients, 5x5 and 6x6. This can be used for the adults. So here this rubber dam sheet, it has two surfaces. One is a shiny surface, the other one is a dull surface. So this shiny surface should be facing the tissues always. And whereas the dull surface that will be facing the outer side. This is about the rubber dam sheet and this is available in even various thicknesses also. Quadrant and this is the lower right and this is the lower left. Starting from central incisor to the third molar. Similarly in all the four quadrants. So whichever the tooth we are going to work. The first thing is we place a rubber dam sheet on this. Facing the shiny surface down and the dull surface up and position it in the center and whichever the tooth you are working you have to mark a dot on it and to avoid the confusion you can mark either right side or left side on the extreme top like here in this case I am marking on the left side and the tooth which I am going to work is a premolar so central lateral canine first premolar and second premolar. So in the second premolar area I have marked a dot. Now coming to the third part that is a rubber dam punch. This is a rubber dam punch. So here this rubber dam punch is used to make the holes. Wherever I have made the dot there to make the holes. This is available with either five holes or, or six holes so with a different sizes like the smallest one can be used for the mandibular central and lateral incisors and the second one can be used for the maxillary central incisors and lateral incisors third one can be for the canine and for the premolars similarly the last one can be for the first molar and second molar depending on the size of the tooth we have to choose so in this case since I am going for the premolar maybe I will go for the third one so the dot which I have marked I position it in this area I position it here come in and I make a hole that is the clamps so these are the set of the clamps these are the wing clamps clamps are available either wing ones or the wingless clamps so here the difference is when you have these wings with this you can retract the soft tissues better so isolation will be better when you are using the winged ones. So here depending on the tooth which we are working accordingly we select the clamp. So here the parts of the clamp are it has a bow and it has two wings. Each wing has two holes that is to hold the uh, with the forceps and the second thing is even to tie the floss also. So each wing has two prongs two prongs on this side and two prongs on this side total of the four prongs these are for the to hold the tooth so here this should be engaging in the line angle of the tooth and this bow whenever we are placing the clamp 
this bow should be always towards the distal surface of the tooth and the floss should be tied on this starting from here and so, uh, enveloping this bow and then coming this side so every time the floss should be suppose if i am using it for the lower right side then it should be like this the bow is towards the distal side and the floss should be coming out like this this is the forceps this is used to place and then to remove the clamp so basically this is to carry the clamps to the tooth and to place it and then to remove it now this is brain so here these are they comes in uh, two types one is a metal one other one is a plastic one one advantage with the plastic one is that sometimes you need not remove it while taking the radiographs so it doesn't show that radio opaque image in the radiographs so once you place the uh, rubber dam sheet with the help of this we stabilize it in the patient's mouth so now we'll go ahead with the placement in the pa patient's mouth this uh, plastic one is also available as a foldable frame so advantage with this is when it is in position if you need to take a radiograph you can simply fold it and take a radiograph so actually we need not remove it so it becomes much more convenient so the floss should be tied from the towards the tongue side to the cheek side and the length of the floss should be at least minimum of 12 inches should be the length so that it is quite sufficient to hold it from the outside now first thing is i am going to check whether this clamp fits in that particular tooth or not so this is fitting in the for that particular tooth exactly the prongs are engaged in the line angles so now this is my clamp selection for this particular tooth this is the uh, one technique where first i place the sheet and then i adopt the clamp onto the tooth yeah. so i just let it be like that you are going to place the frame so hold the frame this way now the first thing is we are doing the selection of the clamp so now we are going to do it on the second premolar i just check whether is it seating properly or not okay it is seating properly now it is engaging in the line angles so now once the clamp selection is done now i remove it i will engage it to the sheet where we have made the hole for the premolar for the second premolar right side so i am engaging the wings of my clamp to the sheet this way now this i will adopt it to the rubber dam frame this is how the rubber dam sheet has been adopted to the frame now with this i carry it to the tooth where i need to place the rubber dam bank
now I am carrying the clamp to the tooth along with the frame okay this is how tongs are engaging the tooth I release it once I have placed the clamp now I push the rubber dam down from the clamp on both the sides Then with the help of the floss, push the rubber dam properly in between the in the interdental area. So that rubber dam helps in better sealing. The same way even for the distal side also. Once it's done now, it has adopted well. Now for a better sealing, one can place even a barrier, gingival barrier or to prevent the leakage of the saliva or and this is how a single tooth isolation has been achieved.